Yeah, Your Excellency, Ambassador Kai Ramu, Chair of the WIPO uh, General Assembly, Honourable Ministers, Your Excellency, these, the Ambassadors and Permanent Representatives, uh, and distinguished delegates. It's a really a great pleasure for me to join the Chair of the WIPO uh, Assembly, whom I should also like to thank for her leadership, uh, to join her in welcoming you all to the first WIPO Assembly is to be held in this new conference uh, hall, this new building. The completion of the conference hall marks the termination of a building program that has lasted for six years now. Uh, it has produced the very successful new building, which has been occupied by WIPO staff for three years now, uh, and what we hope will be an equally successful new conference hall with improved connected meeting rooms and facilities for member states. The new uh, conference hall has been a challenging project uh, and we shall celebrate its opening officially tonight uh, on which occasion uh, I will have the opportunity to thank the many, many persons who were involved in this project. But uh, please allow me to mention uh, two in particular at this meeting and to pay tribute to them, namely Mr. Ambi Sundaram, the Assistant Director General for Administration and Management, uh, and Ms. Uh, Isabel Boutillon, the Director of our Premises Infrastructure Division. Both of them have done outstanding work in uh, bringing a complex project uh, to completion largely on budget. And I think you would agree it's really a magnificent facility. Uh, we'll talk about it tonight, but uh, please allow me one just personal observation at this stage. I must say I think uh, that one of the things that the architect has achieved very well is the integration of the podium with the delegations. Uh, there is very little separation. Uh, and indeed, the, uh, the fullness of the, of the hall, I think, is occupied by the delegations. Uh, and the podium is reduced, if I may say, with the exception of the chair, to its appropriate uh, position, uh, uh, with, without it being too important. The past year um, has seen continued health and stability in the financial condition of the organisation. We completed the last biennium, that's 2012 and 2013, with an overall surplus of 34.6 million Swiss francs, and that was achieved on income of 680 million, which was 5.1% uh, higher than our budgeted forecasts, largely due to the uh, growth in our global IP systems, particularly the Patent Cooperation Treaty. Expenditure uh, was uh, 612 million for the biennium, which was 5.6% lower than the budgeted forecasts. Uh, and that uh, uh, those savings were achieved mainly through uh, cost efficiencies, new uh, or the productivity gains in terms of IT systems and new management tools, and I'd say the judicious use of outsourcing in certain areas. The reserves are in a sound condition. Uh, our net assets stand at 209 million Swiss francs, and that is above the target level that you, the member states, have set. Uh, for our reserves. We're still at an early stage in the new biennium 2014-2015, but uh, on the basis of current indications and in the first eight months of that biennium, I think that we can say that we are certainly on track to meet the budget forecasts and expectations. And all things being equal, which is not necessarily the best assumption in a world that is a uh, world economy that is still beset by uh, hesitant recovery, I think, and low visibility, uh, but all things being equal, we would expect to again uh, go through this biennium achieving a modest uh, overall budget surpl surplus. Uh, the sound financial, uh, financial condition of the organisation results from our global IP systems, uh, the Patent Cooperation Treaty, the PCT, the Madrid system for trademarks and the Hague system for industrial designs. I think uh, I would like to say that over the last 10 years, when we look at these systems, we see that uh, membership, both membership and use of the systems, uh, have increased very, very significantly. 
Uh, in the case of the PCT, I, I set these figures out in uh, the text of my speech, uh, so perhaps it's a bit perplexing to go into all of the figures, but allow me just to mention a few. In the case of the PCT, membership has increased by 19%, so that we now stand at 148 member states. Applications have increased by nearly 70% over the last 10 years, from about 120,000 to about 200,000. Uh, or 205,000. Last year, in fact, was the first year in which we exceeded in a single year 200,000 international patent applications. In the case of the Madrid system, it's a similar, if not better, story. Memberships increased by 37% over the past 10 years to 92 contracting parties. Uh, and uh, international applications have increased by 60%, so that they now stand at about 46,000. The Hague system, it's the same story, but on a much, much, of course, uh, smaller scale. Uh, in the course of the last 10 years, we see that memberships increased, in fact, by 150%, and uh, applications by 120% to about 3,000 international applications. I think that these are very impressive uh, figures, and I think that they demonstrate that these systems are very good examples of successful international cooperation. Uh, in addition, of course, the uh, systems are the basis of the revenue of the organisation, accounting for 95% of that revenue. And I think these are all good reasons uh, to say that WIPO's global IP systems should be one of the essential priorities of the organisation in the coming six years. Uh, as such, we uh, shall endeavour to oversee the continued geographical expansion of the system so that they are truly global uh, in their reach, as well as the continued improvement in the electronic operating environments of the systems which account for our productivity gains as well as an enhanced level of service to all of the uh, member states and users. Uh, it's, it will continue to be important that the systems remain cost effective and I'm very pleased to recall uh, in this regard that over the last six years, despite considerable augmentations in the workload, there has been no fee increase in any of the systems uh, and that cost effectiveness improves the accessibility of the systems. The most challenging part of the organization's program is the normative agenda. Uh, the member states have successfully negotiated uh, over the past two years two new treaties, the Beijing Treaty on Audiovisual Performances and the Marrakesh Treaty to uh, facilitate access to published works for persons who are blind, visually impaired or otherwise print uh, disabled. Uh, accessions to these new treaties have started and I would urge all member states to give strong consideration to acceding to these new treaties so as to convert the hard work that went into concluding the treaties into new accessions, which will in turn convert the potential of the treaties uh, into realised gains for actors and for visually impaired, impaired persons as well as for the multilateral uh, intellectual property framework. Progress on uh, the new normative projects has been slower in the past 12 months, although I think that uh, the membership has achieved important uh, advances in uh, understanding of the issues and an understanding of the respective positions of uh, the member states. I would urge you to use the present session of the assemblies to try to set concrete work programs uh, to achieve uh, the successful completion of our normative, more mature normative projects. And I refer in particular in this uh, regard to projects on a proposed design law treaty where the text of the treaty is essentially agreed. Uh, and I refer also uh, to broadcasting where we need a roadmap to a successful uh, conclusion, and to traditional knowledge, traditional cultural expressions and genetic resources, uh, where the experts, I think, have prepared the stage for negotiations that I hope in the course of the coming months we'll be able to identify an, uh, an achievable and successful outcome. 
Uh, looking ahead, I think that we all recognise that the normative agenda will remain a challenging area in the coming years. Uh, discussions are underway amongst the Member States to improve the efficiency of the many, if not too many, meetings that are sponsored by the organisation in this regard. Uh, I hope that you will be able to work out an efficient operating framework for meetings which enables the membership to focus on those areas where there is agreement to work towards viable outcomes. I believe that there is a widely held view that the normative committees should concentrate on normative work and that exploratory and learning discussions on the many new and interesting issues that are thrown up by the advance of technology, globalisation and the revolution in the production, distribution and consumption of creative works are better served through occasional conferences in which outcomes are not determined in advance of a shared understanding uh, and widespread consensus on the need to address a particular subject matter through a normative action. I hope that any reform in the operating framework for committees will strengthen uh, rather than reduce the political will to advance multilateral cooperation. Uh, it's apparent to all, I think, that we're experiencing a multi-speed and a multi-tiered uh, world in which international cooperation is pursued in different fora uh, and different forms. Uh, I hope that the multilateral will not be forgotten in this new world. WIPO has, over its long life, uh, built a convincing framework in more than 20 treaties for international cooperation in intellectual property in the interests of innovation uh, and creative works. I hope that the careful and judicious addition of new solutions that add real value uh, in the complex arena that now constitutes international cooperation will feature amongst the political will and the priorities that member states set for the coming years. I would like to draw attention to some of the newer platforms of cooperation that the organisation has developed over the past few years and that are rather less visible than the normative uh, program or the cooperation achieved through uh, normative projects. And I refer here to our global IP databases, <coughs> Patent Scope and the global, global Brands database, to platforms to facilitate cooperation uh, in the delivery of services by IP offices such as centralised access to search and examination reports or our digital access service, platforms for public-private cooperation such as WIPO Research, the Accessible Books Consortium, access to research for development and innovation and access to specialised patent information and systems for the modernisation of IP offices uh, and agencies such as intellectual property automation system and the WIPO copyright information system. I realise that that's a really a quite a bewildering array, array of acronyms uh, and uh, names that is quite difficult to digest, but I would like to take the time to emphasise several things about these platforms. Uh, first, in the first place, I think we've made tremendous progress over the past six years in this area. Most of these platforms did not previously exist. Uh, secondly, the platforms are all voluntary and they are formed on an a la carte basis in which member states decide whether and how they will participate. They rely on the involvement of member states, of course, uh, and member states, I'm pleased to say, have uh, been have had an engagement which is very significant and very positive in all of these platforms. Thirdly, I think that the platforms are very effective vehicles for achieving uh, a number of shared policy objectives. Uh, let me mention uh, several of them. The improved efficiency and operation of the IP system worldwide uh, in the interests of innovators and creators. A much richer economic and business intelligence for policymakers to take decisions uh, as well as for uh, businesses and enterprises to take decisions. 
Uh, the practical advancement of agreed policy positions, for example, the Accessible Books Consortium, is helping, is trying to help in the implementation of the Marrakesh Treaty. And effective capacity building and uh, technical assistance that delivers <coughs> real benefits to the developing and least developed countries. I've dwelt on this uh, technical area at the risk of losing you because I think that we're sometimes uh, too pessimistic about the achievements of international cooperation. And we tend to focus in this pessimism on the normative agenda uh, and too often overlook platforms that can in certain contexts be as effective in achieving, in advancing international cooperation as treaties. Uh, and in addition, I would like to underline that all these platforms are very good examples of the implementation of the objective of the development agenda of mainstreaming development. Uh, this whole program, much of which is specifically designed for developing countries, has been constructed outside our formal development sector, uh, principally in the global infrastructure sector, uh, but also in the global issues sector, uh, and the culture and creative industries uh, sector, and I think it demonstrates how much we have been able to uh, mainstream development. Uh, in addition to our uh, general, uh, our numerous platforms, uh, our general technical assistance and capacity building program will continue to be a central priority. We seek to here, of course, to work closely with member states to achieve outcomes that address the particular economic circumstances and aspirations of the developing and least developed countries. I would like to draw attention in particular to the important work in capacity building that is done by the WIPO Academy. <coughs> uh, over 40,000 persons are uh, enrol each year in the distance learning courses. Uh, of, uh, run by the WIPO Academy, 49% of them are coming from developing countries uh, and 40% from countries with economies in transition. And courses and tutoring uh, services are available in seven languages. In order to meet the many challenges that lie ahead for the organisation, we need first-class staff and I would like to place on record here or to take this opportunity to thank the staff of WIPO for their professional and dedicated service. The number of total staff has remained static over the past six years despite considerable increases in the workload and this increased productivity is a result not just of improved IT uh, systems and new management tools but also of the hard work of the staff. I'm very pleased to present to these assemblies uh, my proposals for the new senior management team. Uh, we undertook an extensive process to arrive at those proposals which included reviewing applications for available positions from 360 persons. Uh, and I would like to thank all member states for their very constructive engagement in this process and I look forward to working closely with the new uh, senior management team which I believe is an outstanding team. I should like to thank the outgoing members of the uh, senior management team for their work over the past five years. Uh, there have been many successful outcomes over that period and members of the senior management team have played an indispensable role uh, in achieving those outcomes. So distinguished delegates, I think, uh, if I may say in conclusion, that we are living uh, through a period in which innovation has become central to the economic system uh, and to society's capacities to address the numerous challenges that it faces. Uh, we are likewise experiencing, I think, the most profound revolution in the production, distribution and consumption of creative and cultural works for the past 600 years since the uh, introduction of the printing press. Intellectual property is integral to both of those uh, developments. And I hope that in the coming six years the organisation will be able to play an important role in developing policies, platforms and Co and cooperation that will respond to the magnitude of the challenges that are arising from this centrality of innovation and from the digital revolution. Thank you very much.